Hi, I'm Anton Chitty, Product Manager for Micromeasurements. I'm going to talk about converting a structure into a load cell using a single full bridge strain gauge. So for example, I can take this drinks container and I can bond a single backing on to convert this into a torsion transducer. And in fact, that's exactly what we're going to do with this can. You can use full bridge strain gauges for making load cells of different deformation modes. You can use them for bending transducers like joysticks or extensometers. Some infusion pumps use full bridge strain gauges to measure the pressure in the pump. Direct stress, for example, torsion tension on bolts or bits of automotive application where you might take a part of, for example, a Formula One car, you might want to measure tension or bending on this component. And then we're going to concentrate on the torsion measurement. So, for example, this could represent a drive shaft from a ship, and it would measure the power output from the engines. We're going to use a left-hand pattern, which is a torsion pattern, as you can see, with five solder pads. And this allows for some balancing circuitry to be integrated into the circuit. We're actually going to short two of those when we come to lead wire attachment for a very simple installation. So the first step is we're going to take one of those gauges and we're going to mount it onto this coke can and I'm going to demonstrate the process of surface prep, of wiring and then of calibration using our System 8000 and Strain Smart software. So let's get to it. Let's get a strain gauge on this coke can. I'm going to install a strain gauge on this coke can to convert it for torsion measurement in a similar way you might do for a drive shaft. I'm going to use normal surface preparation techniques so I'm going to degrease, abrade with conditioner, scrub with conditioner, scrub with neutralizer. And in this video, I'm not going to show you the entire process. You'll just see some highlights. So starting with degreasing. Abrading using 400 grit silicon carbide paper. I'm going to put this on the surface and put some conditioner into where that meets the surface. And for coat can, it should just take a few seconds of abrading to remove the paint and get back to a good quality surface. A further scrubbing process to remove the rest of the contamination. Drying the surface from edge to edge. Now I'm going to scrub with neutralizer to get to a neutral pH to allow effective bonding. And then we're going to dry from center to edge, center to edge. Now that I've prepared the surface of the can, I'm going to take my gauge that I've pre-mounted to a piece of gauge handling tape, and I'm going to position it as carefully as I can to get it parallel to the axis of the can and when I'm happy, I'm going to expose the back, ready for bonding. I'm going to apply M1200 Catalyst to the back of the gauge in a sweeping action, and then allow that to dry for a few seconds. I'm going to take the M1200 adhesive, and I'm going to apply a single drop where the tape meets the surface. There we go, one drop. I'm going to wait a few seconds for the adhesive to spread across the entire width of the gauge and you can see that adhesive just slowly moving across and when it is the full width there I'm just going to wiggle the tape slightly the adhesive is now the full width so I'm going to use a folded gauze and I'm going to press firmly and wipe all the way through and then put my thumb on the gauge and allow it to cure I can hold my thumb for one minute and then leave it a little longer. So now bonding is complete and I've removed the gauge handling tape. I'm going to attach the lead wires. I'm going to put a little bit of drafting tape just across half of the solder tab there. And I'm going to tin the terminals with 361A20R solder, which will just take a few seconds. So we tin each of the five tabs. And I'm going to offer up my lead wire, which I've pre-prepared, ready 
to offer up to the gauge. I'm going to bring that up to the point there, make sure all of the wires are in place properly, taped in place so that they won't move, and then finally solder them in place. One, two, three, four, five. Final step, now that I've removed the tape, is just to give it a final clean with rosin solvent to remove any flux residue, brush and blot dry a few times. Make sure it's completely clean. So here I have my finished installation. You can see I've got five solder pads here. I've got the red and the black, my power plus and minus. The green, my signal plus, and the white bridged across those two connections there for the signal minus. I've put a bit of relief on the cable to make sure no damage happens when the cable moves, and I'm ready to plug in an instrument and calibrate. I'm going to place a connector on the end of the lead wire. I've got the wires pre-prepared ready to go into the connector with the red, black and white to pins 1, 2 and 3, green to pin 6. I'm going to carefully slide those into the connector. I'm going to take my crimping tool and put the connector into there. I'm going to squeeze and then release. And that's my connector placed onto my lead wire. I can now plug that into the system and I'm ready to start taking some measurements. I'm now going to set up our input using a System 8000 and our StrainSmart software and I want to put this in as a calibrated transducer. I'm going to create a new sensor, in this case a transducer, and I'm going to use Newton meters as my output units, but I'm not going to put in any calibration information at this point, we're going to do that by putting a known input into our transducer. I'm then going to tell the system that channel 1 is a strain gauge input. I can program it to a voltage or a thermocouple as well. So I need to tell it it's going to accept a strain gauge. And then under assignments, I'm going to relate the channel to the sensor. So the system knows that I've got a transducer, a strain gauge based transducer, into channel 1. I'm going to create a new scan, scan rate of 10 samples per second, and record at 10 samples per second. Now I'm going to zero and calibrate. So zero just takes out any initial offset from the transducer. Now direct calibration is the part I'm really interested in, is that I can put in a known input to my transducer. Let's say I'm going to input 20 Newton meters. I can then add 20 Newton meters. I'm just gonna twist the coat can using my hand here. Not a calibrated input obviously, but just for principle. I'm going to add the point, at which point it takes the millivolt per volt reading and it puts that against the known value that I put there, 20 newton meters. If I save the calibration information to the sensor properties, I will now then save that against the sensor, so what I left blank early is now populated with the values that I've captured here. And I'm going to apply, and then I can close that, and now I can arm, display, and record my output from the transducer and you can see here I've got a display already set up where I can put in positive newton meters, I can reverse to negative newton meters and that will follow very precisely the calibrated inputs that I would have put here because I've calibrated it with everything set up. The accuracy is only limited by how accurately I input my 20 newton meters into this code can. Once I've got data of course I can save it, display it, export it, find max mins, I can do all kinds of things with data once in the computer, so I can scroll around, zoom in, um, let's have a look at say maximum torsion during my little test here, you can see there I've got maximum 23 newton meters. I can now go on to export that for further processing. So we've now covered the entire process from taking a structure using a single backing full bridge strain gauge, installing and wiring it, and calibrating it using an instrumentation system. 
If you have more questions about this process, please feel free to contact me or one of my colleagues. Thank you for listening.